It's a dark, stormy night. You're in your secret lab creating the first ever dragon, human, dog, bird thingy, and it, it suddenly takes its first breath. It's alive! It's alive! And these splice animals are, and were, actually alive. Would you be mad enough like these guys to make such creations? Goats can produce spider silk now. Well, only at least certain goats can. Could you imagine that? A goat spinning a web like a spider? This new scientific creation was started in the University of Wyoming, where researchers there developed a way to insert the silk spinning genes from spiders into goat's DNA. Now, you're probably thinking, why, why would you do that? And who even thinks of doing that? Well, the idea started when they originally wanted to use the spider silk straight from the source. Due to its strength and elasticity, spider silk fibers could have several medical uses, such as for making artificial ligaments and tendons, for eye structures, for eye searchers, and for jaw repair. The silk could also have applications in bulletproof vests and improved car airbags. How wildly cool is that? Still, a little creepy because goats and spiders who knew? But there is a scientific reason why they chose goats. Since it takes forever for a spider to create their web, they had plans of creating a spider farm. But because of how territorial they are, they ended up destroying one another. Goats were injected in a specific way where only their milk would produce the silk protein needed within the milk. They would then take this milk and purify it into much, much higher quantities. And the goats so far are fine with it, they claim. They have not shown any difference in appearance or health and are silking away at those fibers healthily. The goal is though that in the future, scientists want to use this method on alfalfa plants to achieve even more quantities of silk. Who's up for some animal cell infused grains of rice? Yeah, you heard me right. And they're calling it cultured beef rice. Mm. Mmm. <laughs> As of February this year, Korean scientists are coming up with a new hope for our planet's agriculture issue after it's been suffering with the impacts of industrialized practices. They are growing animal fat cells inside rice grains to help with this issue. But they're also claiming that this could give us another option for a more affordable source of protein. And no, I mean the gym and the state of Canada right now. Bring it over. I'll be the first to eat it. I don't care. I'm struggling to meet my goals here. An author named So Yen Park states, imagine obtaining all the nutrients we need from cell structured protein rice. I mean, I'm quite iffy when it comes to anything that's not naturally made, but at this point, I really don't care anymore. They state adding these cells into an already high nutrient based food could possibly boost it even more. But you know, what if my food starts developing eyes and a nose? growing its own legs and crawling off my plate. They chose rice because apparently its porous structure imitates the biological scaffolding in animals, giving it areas where cells can grow and develop tissue and organs in the animals, not the rice. Not that I'm aware of. They first started with gelatin, which is edible and safe and easily latches onto the rice. Then they went with cow muscle and fat stem cells, to which the final product after 11 days came out looking, at least to me, like raw beef and beans. It supposedly meets all the food requirements though, but it supposedly has 8% more protein and 7% more fat than regular rice. We're gonna get to a point where I start playing fetch with my own food. Someone even tried to make money off of breeding gigantic hybrid sheep to sell off to hunting companies. He was trying to accomplish this by, and I quote, using genetic material from an endangered animal. He has now been sent to jail for six months, and this man was 81 year old Arthur Shubarth. Honestly, using your retirement years by just splicing animals, yeah. I see the appeal of it. It's also like you totally couldn't pick up any other hobby, maybe drawing or singing or bingo perhaps. He illegally imported the world's largest species of sheep for this from Kazakhstan and then cloned the embryos in the United States. He then took the embryos and implanted them into his own sheep, ewes, which then gave birth to an endangered species called Marco Polo argali. Then it just spiled from there using the seed from that animal and putting it into the other females. Bigger animals, apparently, to where he was selling them, paid a lot more. On top of being arrested, he had to pay a $20,000 fine to the Lacey Act Reward Fund, $4,000 to the Nation Fish and Wildlife Foundation, and a 200 special assessment. In the illicit act of trying to make more money, you lost even more. Maybe you'll learn next time not to mess with nature for your own game.
Hold on, he coming. Look out, I think Moto Moto likes you. This big old boy, the Belgian blue cattle, is one crazy looking son of a gun. When I first saw this beast make its way around the internet, I thought it was just a heavily steroid induced cow, making Eddie Hall look like a newbie in the gym. I wanna see you deadlift this weight, Hall. This breed of cattle first made their appearance in the 1950s and was created through an artificial insemination by Professor Hansett. Obviously, they got super famous because of how absolutely beefed out they were, giving roughly 20% more in terms of meat when harvested. But because of how crazy big they are, it's difficult for them to breed safely. And more often than not, a lot of the female cattle will have to go through C-sections from these big ol' offsprings. They're labeled as blue because, despite the white mane base, they do have some color of grayish blue spots on them. But not all of them have this, so it's best to keep an eye out for its extreme muscular mass instead. <laughs> Eddie Hall is also not that far off from deadlifting the 1700 pound cow, since he deadlifted 1102 pounds. I believe in you, Eddie. <laughs> The name Leopon sounds so fancy. This feline has the blood of both lion and leopard, if the name wasn't obvious enough. Not many people know about its existence apparently, and it was a large hybrid cat with the help of a male lion and a female leopard. The physical characteristics of this cat though is ex extremely uncanny. You know those comments where you see people say, that's a person in a costume? This, this is one of those times. The design is extremely human. See what I did there? because we made this monstrosity. The body itself follows more of its mother's characteristics, but the head is clearly lion-based. They do get manes, but they're nowhere near as luxurious and voluptuous as Simba's. Their first appearance was in 1910, in, captiv in captivity all the way in India, and this caused other locations to try and experiment for themselves, what they could get if they mixed the two kitties together. They are usually only spotted in captivity, and the cases of them being in the wild are very low, to possibly almost none. I think I might take these scientists up on the ear mouse, because my hearing has always been atrocious. What's the ear mouse, you ask? Oh, just a mouse that had a literal human ear growing on its back in the late 90s. The little guy was called the Vacanti mouse, or as the creator Charles A. Vacanti liked to call it, the mouse with the ear on its back. Simple, straight to the point. I like it. It's been stated that the ear was cartilage that was apparently forced into its shape. They seeded cow cartilage cells into a biodegradable mold that was shaped like an ear. This was then placed under the skin of the mouse with another ear shaped material on the outside to really help maintain the shape they were going for. It then just grew by itself into the mold. Even to this day, there's scientific practices being done on growing organs for humans to get transplants from. And for this experiment, they used a specific mouse that wouldn't prevent a transplant reaction, a nude mouse. A lot of people were saying this was unethical and started a lot of controversy on these sort of practices. Even though no genetic manipulation was claimed to be used on the the mouse, many people still protested that it was genetic engineering. Usually with scientific mice, they don't live natural long lives, with this mouse being sacrificed as they call it, shortly after the experiment was over with. If I had the option to splice an animal, I'd 100% try to make a pegasus or create real mythical tr or create real mythical creatures like a mermaid or a centaur. I volunteer as tribute. Will I come out looking like a botched plastic surgery session? Probably but all for the name of science, right? If you could splice an animal, what would you make? In the meantime, stay creepy, my crawlies.